find the area between them. The area between the two curves, so notice here, this could be a velocity. Area is velocity times time. That gives you a distance. So the area between the two curves is representing a distance between my cars. In this case, the area equals the distance that car one, me, is in front of you. In this case, the area represents the distance car me is ahead of car you. How would you find the distance? How would you find that area? By letting our same I think we've been doing it. Okay, well, how specifically would you do it? You would uh, subtract car you. Just subtract them? Well, no, I'm trying to think how to word it. How, how would you do it? Come on. How would you find an area between two curves? Set it up. Where does it start? Where does it start? A, or in our case, if we're a dead stop. Zero. Where does it end? Yeah, wherever that time was. In our case, that's good. B is going to be time after 20 seconds or whatever. Say, how far am I ahead of you after 20 seconds? That's what this would do for you. What's going to come first? Uh, v1 sub, uh, v sub 1t or V sub 2t? V sub 1. Explain why. It's a high Definitely. Notice that this was kind of a simplistic example. Sometimes cars go like this, right? They start off and you have an automatic and I have a, I don't know, a stick shift. So probably I'm ahead of you and then if we have very equal cars, I'm going to shift and you're going to keep going with the automatic, you know? So we might go back and forth and back and forth. You'd have to set up several, several integrals to figure that one out. You get me? Every time we cross back and forth, that interval would be a different integral. That would give you the overall distance between the two cars as we went. Now, if you wanted to figure out another sub point here, figure out the total amount of time that, uh, sorry, the total distance at the end that I'm ahead of you, that would be net change. You'd have to just do one integral. If you want to find total distance as we went, as a, like a cumulative effect of how much our cars were apart, whether I was in front or whether you were in front, that's where you'd have all those different integrals. Does that make sense? The area between the curves would represent the overall distance that we were apart the whole length of time. Net integral, where you just went from, no matter what happened here, from zero to, or from A to B or zero to B, that can, that's going to say, at the end of the, the game, who was ahead. That's what that would do. You get the difference there? So it's, it's kind of a, a little, a fine point, but it's kind of an important one. That's what you want. So basically the same idea. So right now we can think of these things as distances if we really want to if we're racing cars. It's kind of cool. I just want to throw that in there because I love racing cars. That's kind of interesting. Now, let's do one more example because I want to show you a couple ways to think about this. Do you have any questions on that before we keep going? I'm guessing your silence says no. No? All right. Okay, you might not like this example so much, but it's good for you to see it because you're going to get something like this on your homework. So stick with me. Even if you don't like it, stick with me. Not bad. Difficult, uh, maybe, to understand at first. After, after the, at first, it's not bad. Okay, why don't you like the example so much? Because it's 
It's not even a function in terms of x, is it? It's actually a function in terms of y, not in terms of x, combined with the function that is in terms of x. So that right there goes, oh, gosh. Do we have to have functions? Not necessarily. Not if we can break them up in some, some manner, which is what we're going to do for the first method of doing this. Secondly, I don't tell you much about this. I don't say where you start. I don't say where you stop. I just say do it. So we need to find out where integrals start and stop, right? Okay. One thing is probably you, you're going to want to find the intersections because that's going to give you at least some range. Also, a picture would be very, very helpful here. Very helpful. We're going to draw a picture first so that you can have a graphic representation of this. Um, in general, you don't need a picture as long as you really understand the curves. One thing I'm, I'm telling you about is, is this. If you just do the intersections with curves, when you don't have functions in terms of x, you can miss key points. Uh, for instance, on the x equals y squared, do you know what that is? Okay, not just the square root of x though. You remember when you take square root, you have to have plus or minus. It's actually a parabola on its side. Do you see the parabola on its side? What that means is that our curve is probably going to intersect here and here, which is what it's going to do. We'd be missing that point. That point right there is going to be x equals zero, the start of your parabola, right? So even though the function does not intersect right there, that is a key point because on the x-axis, that's where we're starting. So that's a key one. So you need to see things like that as well. That's what makes this problem difficult. Let's draw the graphs first. That way we can really get a picture of it. I'll explain everything that I just talked about. Okay, first one. X equals y squared. If x equals y squared, that means that y, sorry, x, uh, x is a function of y. That means that basically you do this. You take your graph and you go, and you look at it sideways. So if we look at it sideways, this thing is actually parabola. You okay with that one so far? Yes, no? Yes. The other function, the other function is pretty easy. The other function is a line. Y equals X minus 2. Can you graph that on the same set of axes? Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Y equals X minus 2 says the y-intercept is where, ladies and gentlemen? Where? And the slope is? Those are our two functions. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Does it have bounded some area within it? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go, go ahead and try to focus on where that area, what that area is. First thing you're going to notice, if I find my intersection points, does it tell us where to start and where to stop? Is it going to miss some, it's going to miss some area. Do you see that? It's going to miss a lot of area. Because starting would start here and end here. That's, that's a problem. We actually have to start here, which is where the picture comes in nicely, or really understanding your graphs. You really have to know what they look like. You have to know where that thing starts. Hey, I know because I've done this stuff before. I know that's starting at x equals 0. I know it. And it's facing this way. So I know that that integral has to start at x equals 0. I know it's going to end somewhere, but I know it's starting right there. Does that make sense? And the picture illustrates it very nicely for you, but at least you have to have that picture in your head before you even contemplate this problem. Now, the next thing I told you was, okay, follow the steps down. Follow step one, which is set these things equal to each other and solve them. Okay, set them equal. To, how are we going to set them equal to each other? You could solve for y. You could solve for y. That's going to be a little difficult because you're going to have square root plus and minus for x, right? Maybe solving for x would be the better idea. So, step number one says, all right, I have x equals y squared. I also have y equals x minus 2. And I want to find some way to set those things equal. Now, solving for y, again, might not be the best bet because you have to take a square root with a plus and minus. That's difficult to do. Other way, you could do it. Well, this is already solved for x, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This one's not hard to solve for x. How would you solve that for x? Mm -hmm. So I would say x equals y plus 2. I reversed them on you, but x equals y plus 2. Now you have to be okay with that so far. Well, now that I have 
x equals y squared and x equals y plus 2, what do you know? Can you make a different equation out of that? Can you solve? Yeah, very easy. How would you solve it? Come on, tell me. The idea is to get everything on one side and then factor it, yes. It is a quadratic after all. It's in terms of y, but it's a quadratic. And hope that it factors. Really, honestly, hope that it factors. It's kind of a pain if it doesn't. It really is. Uh, y minus 2 and y plus 1 is what I got out of that. Did you get that as well? That means that y minus 2 equals 0 and y plus 1 equals 0, you're going to get y equals 2, y equals negative 1. By show of hands, how many of you feel okay with what we've done so far? Okay, true or false? Our integral is going to involve the numbers negative 1 and 2. Okay. Okay. Well, those are those are. That's my question. One of them is a bound, and one of them is. Okay, I'll give you that zero is going to be one of my bounds. Yeah, zero. Is two and negative one other bounds? And negative one is your uh, y axis bound going downwards, and then you have your other, your two would be your bounds on your x axis going to the right. Okay, so that's my question. So actually. you could have an integral integral two y. Well, that's my question. What are you integrating with respect to? The x-axis or the y-axis? The answer is, the answer is either one, but you have to make a choice. Okay, either one, but you have to make a choice. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first way is saying, I'm going to integrate the way we've always done it with the x-axis. In this case, these numbers really are only there to get you x, intercept, or x, x values, to get, tell you where your integrals start and stop. That's it. This isn't good enough if we're going to integrate this way. So if we're integrating this way, it says, hey, look, I basically have three different functions I'm talking about, three of them. Check it out. If I'm talking about functions this way, I think of this as, oh my gosh, well, if I solve this one, uh, x equals y squared. If I do solve that for y, I get plus or minus the square root of x equals y. Do you follow me on that? This right here, because look, at, if, you, if you're going to integrate, you have to have functions in terms of x. You have to. If you're going to integrate x's, you've got to have functions that work. You can't say and plug in one number and get two things out. You've got to say, here's one curve and here's the other one. Does that make sense? You can't treat it as one big function of x because it's not a function of x. What it is is a square root of x here and a negative square root of x there. Can you follow that one? You sure? No? Uh, I, got lost there. I understand where the two formulas, the two different functions come from. This one and this one? I'm not sure I'm following the ramifications of that. Okay. Ramifications are you have to go ahead, you have to be able to integrate some way. If we're talking about integrating with respect to x, you have to have functions in terms of x. Unfortunately, there's no way to represent this as a single function of x. It's not a single function of x. It is actually two functions of x, one on the top and one on the bottom. Have I lost you yet? Going over your head? By blowing your minds up like a grenade? Wow, that's great. A little bit. It should be. It should stretch your minds. Not too far though, because that'd be freaky. Um, <laughs> the big heads walking out of here. Creepy. Anyhow, do you see how I'm getting the square root of x and the negative square root of x? 